Now, want to put your money to work through investing this year, but don't know where to start? While investing has become considerably easier and cheaper given the rise of online share trading platforms, deciding how to allocate your hard-earned cash can still be daunting. Instead of learning from scratch, why not copy what the pros are doing? Well, in this episode, we've invited an inspiring trader. His name is none other than Dr. Clement Chiang. Dr. Clement is a serial entrepreneur and engineer by trade with expertise in launching new companies and scaling startups to profitability in the technology and finance sectors. With over 20 years of experience and 50,000 students as a wealth coach, he knew that proper education in the market is one of the biggest factors that hinder people from building generational wealth and maximizing the opportunities in the market. Because of this, he ensured spiking includes expanded learning pathways to support new investors to improve over the long term. Well, without further ado, let's welcome Dr. Clement into the podcast. Woohoo! Hey, Dr. Thank you Clement. so much, Jason. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a warm welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's uh you know it's finally a dream come true. It's been a while. I've uh you know been uh listening about you. I got to know about you through success resources as well. And speaking of success resources, this is a, a sponsored uh episode from Success Resources, and I'm really grateful that Success Resources is really giving and really awesome to actually collaborate with Regacy to have speakers to come on board to actually speak about their niche and also speak about the upcoming National Achievers Congress, which we are going to talk about it later on as well. So how have you been, Dr. Clement? I've been busy. I just finished a Success Resources event, which is the National oh, nice. Achievers Congress in London. Uh, just came back and then... Uh, Returned back to Malaysia, went to Vietnam. Vietnam came back to Malaysia, now in Singapore. This Saturday, I'll be speaking in the National Achievers Congress right here in Singapore in Marina Bay Sands. Wow, awesome. Wow, I'm looking forward to be there to actually listen to you speak, man. Uh, I've, I've watched your videos. I've listened to uh, the stuff that you've been talking about. It's really tremendous, really amazing. And man, uh, how was the time at London? I'm pretty sure it's a lot of people. I saw this ton of them going there to watch um, Ken Honda, for example, and a few other esteemed speakers there, yeah? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, this time around, I got to meet my teacher, <laughs> Robert Allen, who's the famous oh, author yes. of multiple streams of income. You know, I, I, the, the way I first time meet him is really quite, quite a magical thing because... Typically on a Sunday morning, Success Resources has uh -huh. this practice of doing a, mon a Sunday morning worship. So we entered the worship right. room and lo and behold, my teacher was standing right there. I told him, hey teacher, I read your books when I was in the university. I kind of reverse engineered your multiple streams of income and got the thinking implanted into my spiking entire platform for the software. I want to say thank you to you. And then when the worship wow. started, we were literally seated next to each other, standing up, singing, sit down. And that part of the experience kind of tell me that this teacher of mine, he is very, very humble. Because really, right. I, for more than 15 years speaking for Success Resources, for the lead anchor speaker, very rarely you get a chance to kind of uh, day participate in the Sunday worship, rarely. <laughs> it's, in fact, it's the first right. time a lead anchor speaker uh he came and sat down together with us so it was mind-blowing for me and what a great experience wow sounds like it's an event that we shouldn't miss man and i would love to actually you know highlight to everyone to actually check out national achievers congress as well it's one of the biggest event for success resources where they have invited speakers from around the world not just singapore but us and many other parts of the world to actually come down to speak and to inspire you and to inspire you to make sure that you are making your dreams come true this year, especially this year. And uh, man, Dr. Clement, can you share with the audience a little bit more about who you are and what you do? Yes, absolutely. So I'm trained as a civil engineer. I graduated from Nanyang Technological University and my lifelong dream and passion 
is to be a full-fledged investor uh, investing in the instruments I'll share with you later on. Now, right after graduation, you know, I have always pursued this dream of, hey, what should I do with my life? <laughs> and back then, I was really thirsty for knowledge. In fact, the very first right. instrument I fell in love with was options trading. And the okay. rationale behind it kind of uh, a bit strange because I was looking for something that I can keep chasing after and forever I'll never run out of thirst. And I selected options trading simply because they won a Nobel Prize for economics. Mr. Black and Mr. Shows together came together to create the, what we call the Black Shows formula. This was the oh. same original formula that's powering Chicago Board Option Exchange. So, Rayson, you know, okay. my journey originally started as an options trader for five years. And on the sixth year, almost then, I convert into stocks. And of course, in recent years, oh. I converted into cryptos. And that's why right now, today, I'm investing in three primary instruments, cryptos, options, and stocks. Yeah, that's why you call it um, cozy, right? Cozy. Crypto, <laughs> options, stocks, and yes, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. And okay. the reason why oh, we end with yes is also quite amazing, right? Cryptos, options, and stocks. Yeah. Many times I taught like so many students, and the ones that truly, really make money are those who remain focused and stay focused on the instruments that they want to become experts of. They don't change, they don't migrate, mm -hmm. they stay focused and be very disciplined about it. And I believe that for cryptos, options, and stocks, they are the most liquid instruments on planet Earth. You can buy anytime you want. Okay. You can sell anytime you want. Boom. It's, it's, yes, I'm focused on these three. Yes, reason. <laughs> okay, got it, got it. So, so that means, right, what you're saying is that uh, instead of focusing on like um, one instrument, we should uh, diversify and go into this three, this three uh, portion: options, crypto, and stocks for beginners. Are you saying that? Yes, very very clearly, I'm saying that. And in fact, it's not three instruments. So in fact, what we look at is called a Holy Grail portfolio. So what we've done okay. is we set up a Holy Grail portfolio of stocks. And stocks is like a proven instrument, right? For the last 50 to 100 years, people make money. In fact, every billionaire, millionaire in the world, they make money from the stock mm -hmm. market. That is a proven instrument. Now, options is simply deriving its value from the underlying security, which is the stock price itself. So options and stocks, they're in the same family. So we use this to set up a holy grail portfolio of stocks and options in combination together. This is one part of your portfolio. The other part, follow, the other part of the portfolio is the emerging instrument known as cryptos. Now, in fact, right. uh, this year we got a really, really good piece of news. I call it the 1001. 10 of January, officially Bitcoin Spot ETF was approved that gave legitimacy to every single one of us out here who are Bitcoiners. You know, back in the days when we were talking about Bitcoin like four or five years ago, everyone that you come across, the moment you mention Bitcoin, they look at it like kind of a dirty one. They say, oh, are you a scammer? Are you in, on the dark side? Are <laughs> yeah. you selling guns or drugs? And all that kind of nonsense, right? Finally, right. this year, we got our validation. Okay. Nice.
Hmm. I wonder. Okay. Okay. Uh, right. I'm back. <laughs> yeah. so oh. Yes, I can hear you. My apologies. My apologies. Uh, this, I'm not sure what happened, but uh, there's some lagginess in it. Um, yeah. yeah, so you were saying? Yeah, so I was saying, first part, we, I left off by sharing with the fact that we got to have a holy grail portfolio of stocks and options. They are in the same basket, yes. right? Correct. And because this year, we remember it by 1001, 10 of January, Bitcoin Spot ETF was officially approved and that kind of gives legitimacy to cryptocurrency. And that's the reason why right, right. now, then we talk about setting up another Holy Grail portfolio of cryptos. So you have 16 yes. stocks and options and you have 16 cryptos coin. And that's what okay. we need to do. Okay, cool. That's interesting. I mean, like recently, you know, Cryptocurrencies have gained immense popularity in especially recent years, Bitcoin and even the meme coins as well. So what advice would you give to someone looking to start investing in cryptocurrencies for the first time? Uh, because I come from Wall Street background, I tend, I tend right. to follow those that already approved by Wall Street. And currently there's oh. only one coin that's approved, that's Bitcoin. And this is the fastest growing ETF on planet Earth today. BlackRock is taking the lead. Uh, their mm -hmm. ETF is called iBit. And very soon, they're okay. already right now news circulating on Wall Street that the Ethereum spot ETF will be the next one to approve. So we are looking for two very important signals. Number one, Bitcoin spot ETF approved. And that's the dominant mother of all coins. Number two, okay. The mother of all altcoins is Ethereum because of the smart contracts. So we have to wait for Ethereum spot ETF, bam, approve first. Then we can look at your third, fourth, fifth, all the way to 16 coins that we must own oh. at the portfolio level. But for this okay. moment now, we don't rush that. We want to work with those coins that are legitimate. We can move the money around. And that's what we call investing with a peace of mind. <laughs> yes, reason. All right, all right. Well, yeah, I mean, like uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum has always been the uh, in the forefront for investment. And I noticed recently there are people who are investing in meme coins like Pepe or even uh, you know um, all the other all the other coins that are emerging as well. What would you say about all these meme coins? Would you say that it's um, it's something that we should actually look into as well, and especially you know, uh, Pepe and all these other coins that are out there. Or should we just focus on just these two that you have mentioned earlier, Bitcoin it's like, and Ethereum? It's like I, I don't advise anyone to touch mean coins at this moment because what we really oh. want to see is utility. And you see, the test of utility versus security is a very, very dangerous test that's being challenged right. by the Securities Exchange Commission chairman, that is Gary Gensler. Extremely okay. dangerous right now. And you want to invest with a peace of mind. And that's the Correct. only way that you can do so, knowing for the fact that you have the full power of the law supporting you. So we don't right. rush our students, our community to get into all other coins at this moment. But that being said, it's not stopping you and I or anyone else listening to this podcast to start your crypto project on a particular blockchain that you believe in. So we are looking right. at ERC20, we are looking at Avalanche, we are looking at Mental Blockchain and so on. Start building mm -hmm. up your projects and make sure you're really serving a pain point, not because you want the price to fly. Because if anyone buys a coin expecting the price to go up, that is defined as a security, you won't last long. The law will come after you. <laughs> True, true. Okay, got it, got it. Wow, this this is really exciting, especially, uh, you know, going towards crypto. And uh, man, and, you know, speaking of which, I remember you also mentioned about the other two pillars, which are options and stocks, which are the powerful ones, uh, which has always been there, right? So option trading can be complex for beginners. So what are some key concepts or strategies that 
new traders should focus on understanding? In fact, every trader, every investor, they should understand first thing that they have to deal with is called risk, R-I-S-K. So what we've right. done with that to mitigate risk, we benchmark two of the most successful investors of all time, really the 50 years legends, right? First one, of course, is the Oracle of Maha, Warren Buffett. Second one is Ray Dalio, owner of the largest hedge fund in the world, Bridgewater. Yeah. Now, what we've done is we kind of reverse engineer their thinking. But the problem is this. All their thinking, their secret recipe, their formula is not found anywhere out there in textbooks or in libraries. You can't find them. So what we do, mm. we take it. How did they survive the ups and downs of the market over the last 20 to 50 years? How exactly they weathered the storm? First right. concept, you have to mitigate your risk. And the concept of mitigating the risk means that Take, for example, you have a basket of 16 stocks. You have to make sure every single one of the stock is not related to each other. If they are related in any sense of the word, your risk goes up. So simply yeah. by making sure you're investing into 16 different stocks that are not related at all, bam, straight away you bring your risk down by 80%. I say again, you are, the moment you enter the market, you're faced with 100% risk. But by following the Holy Grail portfolio, boom, you get rid of 80% of the risk. This is step one. And after you enter, you deploy, prices will move up, move down. And so what we teach all of our students to do is the moment the price move up and you're in pure profit position, boom, you execute a second step. That will bring your risk down to 0%. Reason, can you hmm. imagine you if you are investing in 0% risk, Whatever profit that you're taking from the market is pure bonus. You sleep with your peace of mind. Your capital is preserved. You can run a longer run way, run, run way with your investing dollars. That is the core principle of us right now tracking every single money manager on earth. That's exactly what they do to last the game. And that's why we need to last the game. Last the game and not what we call the new generation, fast and furious, you get killed in the market. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, I agree. Wow. So, okay. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you that we have to follow the masters, right? In terms of Warren Buffett, Ray Dalio. And would you recommend people to go to Warren Buffett's meeting, for example, to actually listen to him talk about, you know, all his um, uh, secrets or strategies during that period of time? Or even you yourself, have you went there to actually listen every year or is it a selected period that you go? He just finished on the Saturday and then yes, you can yes, watch yes. it live on CNBC with Becky as the kind of a, the host of the of the AGM and everyone mm. should read all of his AGM. It's found on BookshireHardaway.com but reading is tough. Back then he has Charlie Munger and both of them are like bantering yeah. against each other and telling jokes. Everyone is highly encouraged to read it. And in fact, right now, if you kind of miss the full video, you should go simply hop on to uh, Twitter. Many of them will cut snippets of it. What advice they give to investors? How, they are think, how are they thinking about Tesla versus insurance companies? All this is found all out there. And anyone who right. wanted a sound advice should go on stream. But that being said, you see, every investor has their own agenda, their own priority, own prerogative, where they want to park their money. For example, back in the days when I started early in Bitcoin, right? We are faced right. with an onslaught from Warren Buffett. He called us Red Poison Square or Red Square Poison. <laughs> yeah. Correct, correct, correct. And rats. <laughs> is there anyone touch, touching Bitcoin, you're worse than rats to the power of two. I mean, how do you handle <laughs> that from your mentor? that you worship him as a teacher, and there you go, he's telling you, go to hell, right? That's yeah. why we take a step back. We also need to be savvy as, a, as an investor and ask a primary question. What is the domicile or the central currency that Warren Buffett has of his entire wealth? It's built upon the US dollars. And any currency that challenged the, the dominancy or the dominant role of the US dollar, he will speak against it because he has to protect his wealth. So you take a step back. Okay, teacher, you hate it, Bitcoin, but you know this is this is decentralized. This is really 
the best open ledger in the world. No one can challenge it. It's going to be the digital gold. We go in. And guess what? Today, Bitcoin is a trillion dollar market cap asset class, which BlackRock is advising all their customers to move 30% of their portfolio into Bitcoin. See how the world has transformed right. and changed? And how we wish before the dying years of Warren Buffett that he will have a last minute change of mind and say, perhaps I need to own Bitcoin. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, let's see. Oh, may maybe he would have gotten some, you know, Bitcoin by himself or his friends would have gotten and, you know, we, we never know, right? We never know, right? Th this was some, some of the jokes that I had with my friends back then when we were thinking, hey, maybe uh, Bill or even uh, Warren would have invested some bit of money just that they don't say it out because they are huge uh, advocate for stocks and options. So rather than, you know, talking about crypto, they have to, they are all in into, you know, talking about the benefits of stocks instead. So we'll never know, right? We'll never know, okay? But uh, yeah, I agree with you. And I, I would like to ask you, right? How do you approach risk management when trading, say, stocks, options, or even cryptocurrencies? Any specific tips for managing risk effectively? Yes. Let me start with uh, Bitcoin. In On the 12th of May, 2020, I rallied our community as a, the time is right at this moment. We look at the data, we studied the technology, we studied Bitcoin, of it alone as a decentralized blockchain. And right. I told them that, look, based on historical facts, we can we have very limited data because it's still at an early age. And we say, are we ready to go in right this moment? I will take the lead. So on 12th of May 2020, we went in to buy Bitcoin massively. And you must mm -hmm. buy on <laughs> the first day of the third halving event. All right, that was wow. really on the first day, not on the second, third day, but on the first day, right? So our average price is about $8,000 per coin. Guess yep. what, Reason? Until today, Bitcoin has never fallen below $8,000 per coin. Never. So it's like, wow, holy moly, it's so timely, right? We sat on it all the way right through. But we also preach a very important message. If you get involved mm -hmm. in Bitcoin, do not sell. Do not ever sell. In fact, worse still, do not even ever sell at a loss. But that being right. said, both of us, are we have our innate fear and greed. Those who are fearful for whatever reason, and you know the price starts to go up, they say, oh, I can't handle the pain anymore. I want to take my profit. Fine. At least you take profits. Worse is applied to those who sold at a loss. Because we yeah. have always told everybody, this is something that you hold a HODL. This is mm -hmm. something you need to look long term, like 10, 20 years. Hang on for the ride. So when anyone's proclaimed that they lost money in Bitcoin, this is the problem. Why did they lose money? They lost faith. They cracked under fear and greed. Because when Bitcoin is at all-time high, reason nobody loses money. Only those yep. who sold at loss. We've gone through several all-time high from 20,000 to 64,000 oh. to 69,000 to 73,000. Holy moly, who asked you to sell at a loss? So this is yeah. the part for cryptos that's applied specifically for Bitcoin. And the game plan kind of come to pass because we are all aiming for the Bitcoin spot ETF to be approved. So we literally right through that whole painful journey from a 64,000 drop uh, 69,000 drop back to uh, lowest was 16,000, then pumping back, yep. back right to 73,000. So that whole journey is what we call the baptism of fire. But mm. sorry to those who are, my, my empathy goes out to you if you sold at a loss because you didn't apply enough study on the blockchain itself. This is not something for you to day trade in out. No, 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 no. doesn't apply that way. On the other okay. hand, we look at the stock market. Stock market is very, very different. Because right yep. now, we are faced with a conundrum. The twin tower, or whatever you want to call it, the fight between interest rate and inflation. These two kind of damaged the entire market over the past two years, 2022, yep. 2023. And it has never happened before for the last 40 years. We have not yep. experienced high inflation environment ever before. We've always been faced with free money, right? So right. because of this, 
we got to be even, even more conservative with the way we invest into stocks and options. So what we do is this. The moment we get in, we see profit, protect your profit. And the way we protect it is kind of really, really beautiful. We always protect our capital. We put in 1,000, we protect 1,000. We put in 10,000, we protect the 10,000 at all costs. And then write the profit. Now, this is the part you let automation take over your money management rules so that you don't let your emotions of fear and greed ruin your trade. That is the most important. Okay. Now, in order to mitigate all this, it boils down to the selection of the stocks that you want to invest in today. Now, how do you invest in stocks? This is where data is super important. You must have very, very good data. But the problem is this. Most of the brokerage houses out there that you use, they give you very basic fundamental data, right? Recent, you've probably seen like right. fundamental company, market care, price earning, price sales ratio. You know all these ratios, so what? <laughs> yeah. You're going to compare inside out. When you found a cheap guy, would you really even dare to buy it? Not so simple, right? No. So what right. we do is, on the other hand, we track every single money manager on Wall Street. We track the market, GIC, State Street, Vanguard, BlackRock. We track Warren Buffett, Kyle Khan, Ray Dalio, uh, James, James Siemens. We track all of the superstars. And we put a tag on top of them to tell us at any one point in time, their hot money is moving into which stock. You want to go in together with them at a price equal or lower than them. This is value investing. You invest mm -hmm. cheaper than the best guys out there who completed all their due diligence and you just follow them. That is your best risk strategy. Okay. Nice. Interesting. So for those who, that are tuning in, let me ask um, Dr. Clement, if let's say those who are tuning in right now don't have money, say for example, they don't earn tens of thousands of dollars, they do not have that much money to invest, okay? So say, for example, they only earn about $4,000 per month. Okay, How much are they supposed to actually use that percentage-wise? How much are they supposed to actually use on investments in either that's, one that's of these crypto a, that's options? Great, great or question. In fact, you see, this one all goes down to spending habits and saving habits. When I first started, my account was $10,000. Now, back then, I was okay. still a student, right? And for us as students, we are really, really creative. During the holidays, you can go and work as a waiter. You can work as a tutor. You can do all kinds of jobs. I went to work in the most expensive nightclub in Singapore because the, the customers give us really big tip per serving of alcohol pump, $50, $50. So you collect those monies plus your Chinese New Year, Ang Pao's and all that. You will have savings. The problem is this. Most people don't have savings. Any dollar come yep. in, boom, goes out. Go for a great dinner, go for a karaoke, go for whatever, Starbucks every day, gone. You got no savings. And that's why they're stuck. No money to even consider investing in the first place. So the yep. starting point is if you truly want to be an investor today, look at your past spending habits. That is your step one. No matter what new tricks we teach you, if you don't solve your past spending habits, we are wasting time with each other. <laughs> we can talk until right. cows come home, you still get zero dollars. But let's say if you're serious, you say, yeah, teacher, I'm willing to save. And right now I'm drawing a salary. I'm trying to plan. Let me tell you, if possible, you cut all your spending to the minimal, take all your money, put into your brokerage account. That's what you should do. While you're young, mm -hmm. you're not tied down, you're not married, you have no children, go all out. That's exactly how I started in the beginning. No obligations for anyone, live in my parents' house, all out. You've got nothing to lose. <laughs> Other than making sure you're fat three times a day, done. <laughs> right? So, no excuse, but right. most people don't do that. Especially come to nighttime after work, what do they do? They hang out at Starbucks, spend it at least $15, $20, eat another sandwich, and they hang out in movies. And that is the time where the US stock market opens. Holy moly, we live in Singapore. We are the right. exact opposite of the US stock market. Your prime time, you don't watch Netflix. You watch the stock market. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, my first five years, I was like, I slept opposite of Singaporean time zone. 
because the market opens oh. at 9 30 p.m singapore time closes at 4 p.m 4 a.m eastern uh, singapore time due, and due yeah. to daylight savings sometimes we open at 10 30 p.m singapore time ends at 5 a.m singapore time guess what i don't okay. sleep according to singapore time zone i sleep according to u.s time zone and follow all and accelerate my learning pick up soak up soak in all the knowledge but are you willing to sacrifice that that's the more important question i can get someone can tell you oh set aside 10 percent oh set aside 20 percent so i said 30 percent so what if the ambition is not there to drive you you will break down very soon you'll not follow any rules so True. let's go back to the core fundamental question reason is that do you really want to make money or do you really want to spend yep. money <laughs> because there's a price make money we can't do that many things in one day of 24 hours that god given us and that's the part yep. where numerically is proven 24 divided by three we have eight hours three splits of the eight hour right so the first eight hours right. we spend time sleeping and you should do that and mm -hmm. sleep is so important the next eight hours you're probably working right. for someone else or working for yourself whether you're self-employed business owner you are doing something right and then yep. the third hour third eight hour what do you do this third part of the eight hour determines your future in the financial world most people watch netflix mm -hmm. most people hang out yep. out there they're just doing nothing past time you are serious your third part of eight hour you spend it in the stock market final your you know perfect your skill and that's where you can accelerate and overtake those who are in the same peer group as you do simply you focus on the third part of your eight hours in that one day 24 hours god given us <laughs> yeah right wow this this is called immense op you know becoming successful in the financial market in a way or another and yeah well i agree with you on you know spending that eight hours sleep eight hours you know work on your you know what you like and what you really want to achieve on instead of spending so much time on netflix or clubbing or whatsoever right so okay got it got it wow nice and i like to you know many times a lot of people would actually believe that crypto like what you mentioned is really bad in in a sense the bad investment or what warren buffett actually called it red so besides that what are some other common misconceptions people have about trading cryptocurrencies compared to traditional stocks yeah one of the thing is among the crypto exchanges they kind of promote gambling and which we really hated it they give 10 times oh. leverage 20 times leverage 100 times leverage they, and they package it under really nice name perpetuals and whatever they call it in my whole life reason throughout more than 24 years of investing in the market i never use margin never and oh that's that's the, the only reason why i'm still alive today <laughs> <laughs> I guess like many years. Okay. Any one of you who are thinking about using leverage, what's the mean of leverage? You put in ten thousand dollars, and the crypto exchange is telling you, "Hey, you can invest that hundred thousand dollars. I give you ten times leverage, right? It's some fifty times, hundred times. It's crazy." Right. Now, if you do that, what are you actually cultivating? Don't talk about the up and downside first. Don't talk about profit and loss, or risk and right. reward. Talk about. Okay what habits are you cultivating for yourself if you start entering into the world of 10x 50x 100x ah oh, small money make big money let me tell you it is the dark side i will say okay. it as it is because you are cultivating the habit of a gambler who's thinking about leverage that's not the thinking of an investor an investor really wants to last the race long and sleep well at night so my message right. to do those of you who are still involved in margin trading leverage perpetuals and whatever not stop it you're cultivating a very bad habit now coming to proper investing is you love cryptos for example no problem with it but make sure the particular coin has a real authentic project now you can take right. some learning away from the wall street any companies that lease on your stock exchange or nasdaq First thing, what do you do? Ask your friends, have you heard of this company? Right? Are they bullshitting mm -hmm. somebody or doing financial engineering? You will know. 
simply by asking common sense questions. Look around their products, their services. Look at the team, right? Ask simple questions right. like this first. Now, for cryptos, like recently I did one AMA. Holy moly, the host refused to show his face. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> Why you refuse to show a face? You're hiding from what? Right. Oh, this is the crypto culture. We don't show our face. We're anonymous. I say, hey, how anonymous can you be? Because our tech strip everybody naked. Whatever wallets that you have, we'll strip it naked. We'll know which wallet you're having. <laughs> yeah. How anonymous you're trying to be to evade who? To avoid who? Right? So that is a completely different experience I have. I say, no, I... If I have a real great project, I'll show my face and go out there and talk about it and invite mm -hmm. open and open questions and let, let the community challenge the idea, get the best ideas, fine-tune, iterate, build a better product. But if my product cannot withstand all this onslaught of questions, then jolly well, this is a rock pool. This is just right. boom, air. Next day, it's gone. And that's why many of them suffer losses because... Most of the projects are not authentic, rug pool, money gone, or they claim that they are hacked, boom, gone. That's why be very mm -hmm. careful. And, and I can only say that I come from Wall Street. I follow the Wall Street rules for crypto market. I only go with those that are legitimate and kind of uh, heading towards the right direction. Right. Okay. Wow. Well, okay. So for those of you who are tuning in, make sure that you are actually careful right don't just look at oh because it is uh by this uh very popular influencer this is uh created by someone that is very popular and very famous and then you just go all in just by that uh, you got to listen clearly and check check it through before you actually you know uh invest and even you can check in with Dr. Clement and even go through spiking and understand more about investment before you actually go into it. And I would like to ask you, right, Dr. Clement, could you highlight one of your most memorable investment successes and what lessons you have learned from it? Yes, uh, absolutely, Rayson. In This is uh, one of the biggest flops that turned into a success and that is Facebook IPO. And back then, oh. you know, we are, I was early wow. user of Facebook and like most of you, uh, I hope so. <laughs> My children, they don't use <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> oh. they, kind of, they kind of think like, you know, Facebook is a boomer generation product and they refuse to touch it, right? So right, back then, right. they were doing the roadshow for Facebook and I was utterly convinced this is a stock I want to get involved with the rest of my life. And I kind of uh, prepared myself, assemble all the funds and took part right. in the IPO. Took part in IPO meaning to say we can't get the pre-IPO allotment of the shares because there was a mad rush by Wall Street. You know, all, all the market makers kind of always seize up all the good deals already. So you can really only buy on the opening bell. So I instructed my banker I, I because the funds quite substantial. So we did it through the bank. And I was thinking the bank probably had a priority pipeline to cut the IPO queue at opening bell. True enough. They got my deal. We were the first to get in. Guess what? Oh. 30 minutes later, the entire exchange collapsed. Crash. <laughs> <laughs> Not Facebook, but the whole exchange crash. <laughs> those who get in cannot get out. Those who want to get in get stuck. The money stuck somewhere. It was a complete oh. mess on day one. All right. So the very next day, the oh. stock price dropped, dropped by maybe 20%. The third oh, day, damn. another 20%. Within the first week, 50% wipe out. Oh. Five zero. And it dropped, I think, okay. as low as uh, maybe uh, left, I don't know, dropped by maybe 70% drop. So at a uh -huh. point in time, all the bankers start to get very nervous because they were telling me, right. oh, Dr. Clement, by the way, you know, among the retail investors, you are the largest in Singapore investing Ooh. to face IPO. I think, oh. And they were pressurizing me, take loss, quickly take loss, get out, take out your cash. And they no, get lost. I believe in my thesis. And I hang on okay. for the ride. I have to wait like close to maybe more than uh, two years for the price to break oh. even. And finally, it started to move up. And by the time I get out, I couldn't handle the pressure. I got out 100% profit. 
But if I stay on until wow. today, it will be massive, massive, right? But you know, you, you've gone through that the valley of shadow of death, it's so much pain. And the moment it sits on 100 percent profit, I exited. So that was that was the baptism of fire. And any one of you believe in the stock that you invest in, you hang on for the ride, go through the baptism of fire. Doesn't mean it's down, you have to take losses. Or well, sometimes it's, it tests you, tests your endurance, mm. your resilience as an investor whether you truly believe in your own thesis or not. And that's the reason why most people choose the easy way out. Oh, I heard it from this guy. I believe in it. Oh, I heard it from this guy. They outsource their responsibility to someone else. And when right. things go wrong, bam, they are the first to crack. Always first to crack. But if you resolve in saying, hey, this is my own personal thesis. I done all my research. I don't know my investigation. Through heaven or hell, I'll go through with it. Then that's where you burn as a what we call the wow. baptism fire as an investor. <laughs> wow, that, that is uh, gonna be a really tough mental ride for any investors, and especially like uh, you know, if, if let's say that stock or even that crypto, right, it keeps crashing day in, day out for say two, three, or even a month, would you just cash out just like that or? Would you still stay on and say, hey, I have that belief that this will rise up in, in you know, the next few days more? I can only give you uh, two sides of comparison reason for Wall Street for stocks. We never sell at a loss right. because we believe stocks okay. long term will go up, rise up in value. That's why the selection process of the stocks must be extremely stringent. But during now, this period okay. when we are still kind of, uh, you know, facing very high inflation, not that high. We have a, a inflation that kind of dropped from the high, but the Fed refused to cut interest rate. So we are right now with a high interest rate environment kind of cause a lot of volatility. Then that is where yep. the moment any of your position turn into profit, bam, you must log in and protect your capital. This is so important, right? We see many times the guy go up, we log in, the guy drop, boom, out our base capital is back again. And then we can go back in to buy at a lower price. So this is currently for now, this is what we practice. For cryptos, we only follow those that are legitimate. Right now, there's only Bitcoin. Right. And Bitcoin is very clear. There's a really price, price target by Wall Street. From $1 million per coin to 100000 150000 by end of this year, or 2030, $3.8 million. Everyone got their price target. All I know is this. It will eventually has to cross one million dollar per coin simply because of one thing fixed mm -hmm. supply 21 million coin growing demand it's a lot of demand and supply the price can, can only go up so it's a very simple mathematical right. truth takes time 2030 32 or the eight halving all this will happen okay wow nice okay wow this I, I believe, you know, those who are tuning in who haven't jumped into the bandwagon of investing is the time for you to invest right now because it's going to run bull. Even though it was bearish a bit here and there, past few months, there were some ups and downs. But of course, I'm pretty sure this year it will go bullish again in, in the long run for not just stocks, but also crypto in terms of Bitcoin as well. Okay, and uh, speaking of stocks, right, can you share with us like which are the apps that you will highly recommend for us to actually go into investing? So, for example, like Tiger Brokers or even Moomoo, for example, which one would you recommend? Okay, for stocks investing, the brokerage platform that you use is absolutely, absolutely important, right? And right. One, of the, one of the key selection criteria is it should be a public list publicly listed company listed in the U.S. stock market. That's the first criteria. Okay. So you have the guardrails of the Securities Exchange Commission overlooking at them. The second guardrail that you've got to look out for is are all the funds, like your sovereign wealth funds, your hedge fund, family offices, using the same brokerage as you do. Very right. important because that determines the liquidity because the order flow that goes to the final point, all this has a queue system called first in, first out. If your brokerage house is not serving institutional great customers like the hedge funds, the family offices, let me tell you, their pipe is not big enough. 
you will always be the last on the queue, right? Third is the question of commission fees. It must be the lowest on the planet, if not free. But we know from Robin Hood, the moment you go to a platform with zero commission fees, hello, you're not getting the best bid and ask prices. They are selling the order flow to the prime broker out there. So all these are covered. Last but not least is the fourth criteria. It must have a very powerful tool. While you're sleeping, protect your base capital. And when the price goes up, max out your profit. And all these I described, we found it in one brokerage house. And that's called Interactive Broker, the number one brokerage house, which is the prime broker for every hedge fund out there, every sovereign wealth fund out there, family offices out there. All of us, we use Interactive Broker. Nice. Okay. Interactive. Okay. Cool. 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 So, yeah, we'll definitely go and check this out as well and to ensure that we are actually using the right platform to actually invest as well. And, you know, Dr. Clement, you're going to be a speaker. I would say you are a speaker at the National Achievers Congress. So what can attendees expect to learn from your session on 10th of May? Wow, this Saturday, I was, I was, the National Achievers Congress will take place on Saturday and Sunday. I'll be speaking on day oh, yeah. two on Sunday, Seven. right? Okay. So what's going to happen is any one of you coming for the show, you're going to have a very clear definition what is your finishing line. If you have no clear nice. finishing line, you really do not know what you're really chasing after. So I'm going to give you a crystal clear plan, starting with the breakdown, what it means to have a cozy instrument on hand where you have to decide. There are many ways to make money. You can be self-employed, you can be business owner, you can be employee and so on, right? But in terms of right. investing instruments, we only got three major criteria. Number one, it must have liquidity. You want to buy, you can buy. You want to sell, you can sell. Now, as in now, now. Number two, you must have superior data. Because if you are having half cooked, half big data, you're trading in the blind. And number three, you right. must know you're investing with who and against who. And based on these three criteria, we share with you the concept of COSY, C-O-S-Y. Then after sharing you the instrument, we define the finishing line to cross your freedom. I'm going to teach you one single step to become a millionaire without having a million dollar cash in your bank account today. What does it take okay. for you to cross the million dollar line? And beyond crossing the line, your one decision today will serve out three generations. You, your children, and your grandchildren. Three generations because of your hard work today, bam, all taken care of. And finally, a call okay. to action where are you ready to rise up as an investor? Many of you are thinking about different ventures. You want to be a running an online business. You want to be a reseller. You want to be a creator. Many things to do. But the most important thing to chase is what? Ultimately, you have to chase wisdom. You could be making money from a business today, making money from employment today. But if you lack wisdom, your money will be gone tomorrow. You'll be scammed somewhere, cheated by someone, wrong, make the wrong decision and all that. So truly, what do we really need to chase? We need to chase wisdom. And the best wisdom that you can extract from anywhere in the world is the US stock market. This is right. the home of wisdom. That's why the billionaires, the, the billionaires and the millionaires are all focused on the, on the stock market because that is where they get their best learning experience. Back to you, Reason. <laughs> nice. Wow, awesome, man. I, this makes me feel like I want to go to National Achievers Congress to learn more as well. So for those of you who are tuning in and you want to, you know, get to experience how Dr. Clement is, you know, going to impart you with this awesome wisdom, you should go and check out the link that I have actually posted in the comments for Instagram and LinkedIn as well. You can actually go and sign up from there and you can get yourself not just free tickets but also at the same time highly discounted price okay for you okay only for you it's this is a really amazing opportunity of a lifetime for you to actually learn and to grow and to also at the same time to network with these amazing speakers and amazing audience as well all right and uh, dr clement i just want to ask you 
how do you see the future of cryptocurrency evolving in the next five to 10 years? What potential impact might it have on traditional financial markets? Well, the future of cryptocurrency is going to be very, very huge because first we study the flow of money and looking at the Bitcoin spot ETF itself is the fastest growing and the largest ETF at this point in time. It's going to surpass all other financial instruments and assets. Now, we talk about the market capitalization of fiscal gold, the gold that they duck out on earth and the gold jewelry they're wearing around my neck. Right now, it's about $14 trillion. All right? $14 trillion market cap. And what's the market cap of Bitcoin? About $1.3 trillion. We have a right. 10x gap between Bitcoin versus native gold. But very soon, this will have a flip over effect when digital gold overtakes the native gold and surpass that $14 trillion market cap arena. And this is what we are talking about. Many of the sovereigns out there, the countries are already stocking up their Bitcoin without telling you and I as the citizen. Why? Because the, the, the common currency that they have right now is packed against the native gold. Very soon, it will be packed against the digital gold. This is the direction. It's unstoppable already. Now, the next thing we want to talk about future of cryptocurrency is the projects that built on top of the blockchain. Now, these are really, really some of the really, really great projects out there solving real pain in the marketplace. So take, for example, one of the challenges I want to bridge for spiking is this. We are solving the, the pain of information asymmetry. How come the big guys always have better information than the small guys? It's like a David and Goliath conundrum, you know. Wow. Like yep. David is always fighting against the big giants out there. Now, can we close this gap? We say, yes, we've done that with Wall Street. We solved the pain of information asymmetry. Today, we strip naked every single money manager on Wall Street. Now, as I speak with you, we are taking the whole tech, same tech stack, moving into cryptocurrency market. And we say, right. we're going to strip naked every single wallet out there. And we're going to track the big wheels, how they move their money in and out, send in, send out. Everything, thereby determining the future prices of cryptocurrency. So all this boils down to analytics. And that's why more and more engineers, technologies will come to this space and say, hey, we're going to make it so easy for everyone. You know, like recently I took part in Miami Bitcoin Festival. And this is like oh. amazing. I was there witnessing firsthand. We are buying physical goods like T-shirt, like this T-shirt I bought, using the Bitcoin Lightning Network, the Layer 2. In three seconds, boom, using Bitcoin. That's it. It's done. So this is cool. already coming to pass. So more and more such technologies will be rolled out, such products and services will be rolled out, sitting on top of the blockchain. And this is the best, best invention today, where no one can cheat the system, open ledger, in, out, everything transparent, everything verified. And that's why this is the world of verification we are, we are moving towards to. It's not going to change. It's going to, not going to change, but it's going to totally dismantle all the traditional infrastructure that we talk, think about right now. Nice. Okay. Okay. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Such, such technology. And for those of you who haven't jumped on it, quickly jump on it and learn and, as much as possible and then utilize whatever that has been taught in this podcast episode and also through Dr. Clement's spiking uh, course itself his website yeah you go and check it out and you will definitely be grateful that you have actually joined earlier than you know the other peers that are still sitting and watching netflix okay and um <laughs> and dr dr clement just want to ask you right what advice would you give to aspiring investors who want to build wealth through trading and investing in today's dynamic markets very, very good question. My advice to you is this. First, you have to light up your ambition. I think I taught so many students, the most difficult topic to teach is that fire, that, that fire in the belly, the ambition. What is your ambition today? Because you want to learn many, many tricks of the trades, many different skills in the market. But nothing right. beats having a big ambition. So I want to encourage all of you to first plant that seed of ambition within your heart. How much money you want to make and for what purpose? 
So back in my when I was in the early 20s, I have a big ambition. I, I want to do something really big for my church. I say, okay, this is the target. I want to cross that line. And then we set up a I set up for myself a goal. And that goal is simply to become a millionaire by the age of 30 years old. It's a very high wow. bar. I could never imagine, okay, how am I how the hell am I going to do that? But somehow the magic right. thing about goal setting is it start that seed and a seed will start to blossom. You start attracting many things into your life. You want to attract money, money will come to your life. You want to attract certain friends, those kind of friends will come to your life. And then you start working towards your goal and you cross that line. So whatever instrument, whatever asset classes, whatever investing, trading and all that, nothing beats having that ambition first. And be very, very detailed about this ambition. Why you need it? What's the purpose it serves? And what's the number? Write it down and look at it every, every, every single day. And once you have this, all the attraction will start to come. Some of you will be inclined into investing in property. Some of you will be inclined to become a business owner. Some of you may be attracted to become a content creator like Rayson. Some of you may be attracted to the stock market. And when you are ready, the teacher will show up in your life. That's my message to you. Awesome. Wow. Okay. So make sure you guys are ready so that your teacher, like Dr. Clement, will appear in your life and he'll guide you through towards your goal and your dreams and even what everyone call it as the financial and time freedom in the modern era. And also at the same time, last but not least, uh, I would like to ask you, Dr. Clement, what role do you think events like the National Achievers Congress play in educating and inspiring individuals interested in finance and entrepreneurship? Well, my, my relationship with uh, National Achievers Congress goes way back, really way back, more than 15 years ago when uh, I was invited to speak wow. for the first time on the stage. And uh, right now, the, the event is running like 30 years in running, right? 30 years already. And that's among the speakers, there's always this, this thing that's going around. So far, in the history of National Achievers Congress, 30 years running, there are only like four speakers who go on stage that could command and sell more than a million dollars. There's only four. Is that oh. like running the four-minute mile, right? That, 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 and then four-minute <laughs> round, four-minute miles, the moment someone cross it, boom. The second one cross it, boom. The third one, boom, 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 boom. And everyone start breaking that record. Now, I'm sharing from, with you from the perspective of a speaker who spoke on the stage for more than 15 years already. And every time okay. I go on stage, what is really most important for me is, do I have an opportunity to make an impact in the lives of my audience? I got very mm -hmm. limited time. Each of us, maybe 75 to 90 minutes allocated and very, very strict about it. Once your time up, boom, your mic is off. You're off the stage, right? So we have to decide... Yeah. In the short span on this Sunday, 75 minutes, what can I share that can light up the fire in your belly? That will raise up within you the spirit of ambition. That is my intent. That is overhanging on me because I define a good job is I can inspire you to stand up, rise up to the occasion. Then I've done my part. So National Achievers of Congress have been around for 30 years. Let me tell you, they really curate the speakers on stage. Everybody has to be at their best. And that's why for you as an audience, you are sitting there, you thought, oh, this is like, come and watch a show. You do not know what's going on at the back end. The, curate, <laughs> the curation is very high standard. And among the speakers, very competitive because everybody wants to give their best. They want to inspire you. But you sitting there, you had two choices today. You can either sit there like a Zen mode, like some Topekong receiving knowledge and oh, don't participate. I say, clap hand, don't clap hand. I say, raise our hand, don't raise our hand. I say, yes. Uh, you have a choice. <laughs> We've seen that many times. Or right. you can engage with us full heartedly, receiving the full impact of the message from different speakers. And you will definitely mm -hmm. walk, walk away with a great idea, with a great fire and ambition light up in your life. That's the big takeaway. So do not, do not discount this weekend. This weekend is going to change your life. 
because everyone is going to give their best. And that's my message for you. Wow, awesome. Wow. I, I am really inspired by it and I'm really looking forward to meet you and to even watch you perform your magic on the stage <laughs> as well. <laughs> and uh, well, thank you so much, Dr. Clement. Uh, you know, it's really an honor and pleasure to have you here on the Regacy Show. And not just that, thank you for all those who attended live on LinkedIn and Instagram. The hundreds of you that have actually watched this, um, you know, this episode. <laughs> really appreciate you guys for coming on board. And also at the same time, thank you, Success Resources, for this uh, collaboration. And I'm really looking forward to, you know, collaborate even more and to have amazing speakers like Dr. Clement to come on the Regacy Show to speak as well. So with that, I would like to thank each and every one of you again and stay tuned for the next episode of the Regacy Show and see you on this weekend at National Achievers Congress. Okay, so with that, take care and goodbye. Thank you, Reason. Thank you, everyone. Goodbye.